Neurogenesis is the production of new neurons in the brain. For a long time, it was believed that the, the brain didn't produce new neurons after adulthood. But about 10 years ago, there was some evidence that indeed the adult brain does produce new neurons. There were these new neurons in a part of the brain known as the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is a part of the brain that's um, involved in learning and memory. We know it's necessary actually for some aspects of learning and memory. After much discussion about these new neurons and the fact that they happen to be in the hippocampus, we decided to investigate uh, whether or not they might potentially be involved in learning and memory. So over the past 10 years, we've accumulated considerable evidence that, that they are, that they're, they're certainly affected by learning, there's no doubt about that, and they might even be necessary for some aspects of learning. So the hippocampus has these cells that are somewhat like stem cells, and so they, they just continuously produce these new cells. So these cells are very, very sensitive to their environment, you know, the external environment as well as kind of the internal environment of the animal, hormones and things like that. However, once these cells are produced, oddly enough, most of them don't survive. What we wanted to know is whether or not if we could keep these cells alive if animals were to learn something new. So what we did was we train animals on these different learning tasks that require the hippocampus, that depend on the hippocampus to, to do it, right when the cells are about to die. So the cells are generated, and so we mark them with a neurochemical marker that can detect these new cells. And then we, and so then we, we can monitor them across this period of time. And then we train animals on these various learning tasks, and we find that the animals that learn this task keep these cells. But if you don't learn the task, the cells die. We use the rat because we know a lot about the hippocampus of the rat, and so we can manipulate these various learning tasks and determine you know, what is it specifically about learning in that model that rescues these cells. And the tasks that we focus on are called um, associative learning tasks, where an animal learns to associate one stimulus with another stimulus later in time. The task that's really effective is a task known as trace conditioning. And in trace conditioning, the animal hears a tone, and then there's a period of time where there's nothing. And then um, some you know, half a second later or so, he receives the stimulation of his eyelid. And that causes him to blink. It's called eyelid conditioning. And the animal learns that the tone predicts the stimulation and blinks eventually in anticipation of the eyelid stimulation. So it's not the only type of learning that rescues these cells, but that's just the one we've mostly focused on. One other focus of my laboratory has been sex differences, looking at um, sex differences in learning and how those sex differences uh, affect the brain. When we were trying to determine whether or not it was really learning, you know, that rescues these cells from death and not just some, something about the training experience or the stimulation or the, even the stress of it, we thought, well, maybe it would be interesting to look at sex differences in learning because we know that under certain conditions, females learn better than males do. And so we, we thought, well, it would be interesting to see if then, by virtue of the fact that they learn this task so, so much better, um, would they rescue more cells than males do? And uh, indeed, that's what we found. I think, you know, that these data that we have in, in animals and rodent uh, species are maybe suggestive and maybe support this idea that if you learn, if you continue to learn throughout your life, you are continually changing your brain and, and potentially keeping neurons there that, that wouldn't, wouldn't otherwise survive.